Uh, speaking of bands that Hugh Syme did album covers for, Queensryche would be one of those bands. And I believe we may have woken him up because he's in Arizona. Maybe a time, maybe a bit of a confusion with the time change. But uh, we welcome Queensryche's yeah. guitarist Michael Wilton to the show right now. Whip, you awake? Oh yeah! Hey, thanks so much for having me. Uh, so excited here in uh, Tempe, Arizona, and uh, yeah, it's just great to talk to you again, Eddie. You too, man. Did you get thrown? I don't think we just had the daylight savings time, but they don't move the clocks in Arizona. I don't think, right? Yeah, it's it's a little uh, screwy here. We've been going through different time zones and and with press <laughs> schedules, you know, it's it's uh, just got to get them organized a little better. That's all. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's all good, man. How's it been going? You guys have been the road dogs lately, and I know that just recently you guys lost a few shows because I guess Todd was having an issue with his voice. How is he, and what happened? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we kind of went blitzkrieg, you know, at the beginning of the tour, and it's just uh, uh, been such a great thing. And then, um, yeah, he just kind of blew his voice out for – uh, a little bit, you know, and um, just needed a couple days rest. So we're back at it. So you, so for people coming tonight to the show in Tempe at the Marquee Theater, you guys are good. You're playing. Yeah, we're good. Thumbs up. All right, good, good. How's it been going overall, man? Like I mentioned, you guys were out with Priest, and now you're doing your own headlining dates. Of course, the new record out there. You've been hitting it hard, and I mean, you as one of the two original guys left in this band, I mean, hitting it hard for a long time. How how's this experience been on this run in support of this record? I mean, so far, I mean, this is this is our headline tour, the Digital Alliance tour, and uh, so you know we've been doing the Judas Priest thing all last year and you know now it's time to promote this album and do a proper headlining tour and you know we have a great package we have uh the band trauma bay area thrash thrashers you know and uh then we have marty friedman extraordinaire guitar player you know he flew over from japan brought his uh musicians from japan um and you know it's just it's a good variety show we just hope everybody can check it out yeah, I know Marty. I've had him on this show a bunch of times. His story is incredible because he completely uprooted. I mean, he's from California, but he went over to Japan and he speaks fluent Japanese, hosts TV shows there. He's been living there for a long time. But it's cool that he, in the last, uh, I don't know, I'd say five, seven years, started to make a run into touring and working in America again. I think that's really cool you have him opening. And, and what I like about what he does is, I think like solo instrumental guitar stuff can get monotonous pretty quickly, at least to me, but he puts on a great show and his band is always really good too. They're, they're going over pretty good before you, I would think. Oh yeah. They're very entertaining, you know, and Marty works the crowd as well. You know, he's, he's a, uh, he's a professional, you know, so it's a, uh, it's a good show. The fans love it. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. How were the dates with Priest for you guys? I mean, I got a lot of calls from people who saw you guys with Priest and they loved it. How long did you play? Did you get to interact with those guys much? How did that whole thing go? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we were fortunate to do the uh, spring tour, you know, in 2022, and then uh, they wanted us back for the fall winter tour. Um, yeah, and it, it's been great. We're very fortunate, you know, coming out of a pandemic. And springboarding off of the album, um, it was great to, to be on the road with Judas Priest. And let's face it, you know, I grew up listening to these guys. You know, when I was 17, 18 years old in Seattle, Washington, I didn't want to play Top 40 radio. I wanted to hear the British invasion, the UK invasion, you know, and listen to two guitar bands. And this was one of them. And Iron Maiden was one of them. Man, it totally fueled me. I I love playing with these guys, and Rob is just brings it every night. You know, he's the coolest guy, and he is the metal god. <laughs> well, no doubt about that. But, you know, going back to the early days of Queensryche, man, I worked in a record store when I first heard of you guys, and the EP came out. And I remember opening the box of records and seeing the EP there, and I had never heard of the band. I, you know, this was in New Jersey. And I didn't even, we didn't even know how to pronounce the name of the band when we first saw it. We were like, what is Queens what? Like, we didn't even know. And then I remember opening up, we had a promo copy of the EP, 
and I put it on, and I was like floored. And and me being a fan of a lot of that British stuff as well, and certainly Priest, like you said, I mean, immediately you could hear the influence, whether it was in the two guitars with you and DeGarmo at the time or in Jeff's voice at the time, the way he sang. The the influence was pretty obvious there. What what was the other British metal stuff that you guys were into early on as kids? I'm I'm wondering if it was if it was similar to the stuff that I was listening to. You know, it's like I said, we were down at the, the local record store checking the import section and you know, do we see like Tigers of Pantang, you know, just deep purple, um, except I mean it was uh, just we were sponges, you know, just absorbing all this high energy stuff, you know, and we were in our teens and we didn't want to play top 40. We wanted to rock, you know, we wanted loud guitars. We wanted energy, you know, and this is where we got it from. Yeah. I mean, you could hear it. I mean, it, when, when you, when you guys, um, when you guys had the name, when you came out with that name and, and who came up with the name Queensryche, where did it originate from? Chris DeGarmo wrote a song called Queen of the Right, you know, some kind of right. crazy dreamy, dreamy hat, right? So, um, you know, and we were originally called The Mob, but uh, that was uh, taken. So, you know, the EP had just come out, and uh, on just demo cassettes from the studio as The Mob, and, and we were giving it to this record store called Easy Street Records, and they said, you can't use that name, so... It was, uh, you know, something we took it from the song Queen of the Reich and just spelled it different. And, you know, we spent a good part of our career explaining, you know, the umlauts and, and uh, uh, we, we put them there. We didn't know what, know what, what they were. And it's like, oh, but it looks really cool. You know, so, <laughs> uh, you know, and it's like we get over to uh, to Europe and they go, Queen's Rush. <laughs> No, it's Queens Reich, you know. So, yeah, and it was, you know, when you went into record stores, we we go, okay, yeah, there's not too many bands in the Q section. This would be good for us. Right, yeah, close to Queen too, which doesn't suck. Keeps you close to good company there. Yeah. Did you ever have any pressure? Like, did you ever get any pushback from the label because people didn't know how to pronounce it? I remember we worked with this Hispanic guy at the record store. He used to call you guys Queen Cycle. Like he was way off. <laughs> did, you, did they ever give you? Did it, did the label or anybody say, "Hey guys, maybe an easier to pronounce name"? Or you never had any issue? No, I mean, I think you know we were a young, hot band, and we were uh, taking off, and they they just went with it. I don't think they cared as long as uh, you know we were getting on great tours and and uh, you know getting ready to record our next record in in the UK. Um, the warning, it was. It was, you know, all guns blazing. You know what I'm just realizing, Michael? It's it's 40 years since the EP, right? Wasn't the EP 83? Um, well, the 206 version from the local record store I, was 82. But then when EMI, you know, signed us, uh, it came out in 83 with, uh, I think, The Prophecy as an extra song on it. But yeah, dude, it's been 40 years and you look back at it and it's like, wow, that's, that's been pretty damn cool what we've achieved. And, you know, but I'm a person that looks in the future and just want to keep this machine of Queensryche, you know, churning along. Yeah, I mean, it is a landmark, though. To have, it, it technically is 40th anniversary of the band, which is incredible because i again i worked in a record store i remember when you guys first came out and it seems like yesterday when you look back on the history of the band michael as i mentioned you and eddie are the sole remaining original members from when it all started what's what's been the is there been a in your view a negative and a positive to having the lineup changes i mean i would think the positive is obviously fresh blood fresh ideas and all of that, but maybe on a negative sense, would you have preferred in a perfect world that the five of you would have held it together for the 40 years? Um, yeah, in a perfect world, but, you know, people change. People go down different paths, you know, want career changes, want different musical changes. It's, it's life. There's not too many bands out there that have original members, you know, so it's like we're just doing what we can, you know. We're keeping this thing alive, and 
you know, we're current, we're churning out new albums. We're not a nostalgia act, you know, we're touring the world and, and, uh, you know, that's that's just the way we've always done it. What do you think it is about your connection with Eddie that you and Eddie are the two guys left from the original band that you've... What is it about the two of you that have, that have stuck this out the whole time? Um, I mean, I think it's really, it comes down to... Uh, it's a love of performing music, you know? And uh, we've created a, a huge fan base over our career and you know without them we couldn't do what we do so it's like we're very appreciative of that and you know without the connection to the fans you know it's kind of tough to survive in this industry yeah no doubt um are you do you, do you have any dialogue with any of the former members of the band at all now or you know occasionally time you know little bits of pockets of conversations every once in a while or something, but it's, uh, you know, it's all guns blazing right now. And, uh, uh, you know, it's people go, how do you like comparing the, this band with that band? It's like, I'm not going to compare those guys were, you know, my friends and, and colleagues and it's not fair to do that, you know? So I'm, you know, we just keep the channels open. You know, I'm still good friends with, you know, uh, the Dharma and, and uh, um, he loves what we're doing. So it's like all power to us, you know. And Chris is uh, airline. He, he's still a pilot predominantly, right? Yeah, as far as I know, that was the, the path that he chose, you know, and uh, um, he loves what he does. And you, of course, you guys have um, made a great new record called Digital Noise Alliance, which has been out now for a little bit. And you've you've made some great... All power to us, you know. And Chris is uh, airline... He, he's still a pilot predominantly, right? Yeah, as far as I know, that was the the path that he chose you know and uh um he loves what he does and you of course you guys have um made a great new record called digital noise alliance which has been out now for a little bit and you've you've made some great videos from this record too and I think that uh, some of the visual stuff is really, really cool that you did in recent uh, in recent videos. And you've got a recent one out there, too. I think for Sick Death is the most recent one. But tell me about making videos now, Michael, from when you made them back in the day. I imagine a lot cheaper to do them now than back when you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars that had to be recouped. Yeah, it's kind of, it's all about who you know. And, uh, you know, back in the 90s, we had huge production budgets for videos. I can't believe how much money was spent on those. But um, with this uh, album, Digital Noise Alliance, we were uh, fortunate to uh, film seven videos. And, you know, the, the sixth video just got released called Realms. That's a song that Eddie Jackson wrote. And, you know, in this day and age, it's, it's about quick attention span and getting your stuff on the, uh, uh, I guess, YouTube or, who, you know, whatever video uh, media stream there is, and just to stay current. Because for bands that, you know, have record deals, they kind of front load it and put it out there and, and hope they get their money back. And, and you know, it's like that we want to just slowly keep, you know, pumping out the videos as the tours are going along. So it just made sense for us. And we found this, this badass uh, producer in uh, Florida, in the Tampa area. And he's, he's just incredible. Some of our videos have won awards in different countries. And I think in some of the U S uh, pockets of, of video awarding, I mean, it's just, something that we really uh, took advantage of and just to, to prolong, um, you know, the, the visual aspect of social media while we're continuously 
trudging and touring the world. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let's talk about the current lineup of the band. We know Todd has been there and is a fixture now and, and does an amazing job. How long has Casey Grillo been your drummer? Is it been, it's got to be seven, eight years now, right? Yeah. I mean, he, he's a total team player. He's a great, great drummer. And, uh, you know, he's fit in just perfectly for the band, and the fans love him. Does anybody know what happened to Rock and Field, or are you in touch with them? Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's a touchy subject, and, and uh, that's, that's something that, that we will uh, have to, uh, you know, talk to you about in the uh, future. <laughs> Oh, so it sounds like there's some drama then, obviously. Yep. Current real-time drama, whatever, you know. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, I heard from him a couple years ago, but I haven't heard from him since, and I really don't know what, what happened to him, and fans always ask me, which is why I wanted to ask you. That being said, I also heard from a ton of fans who are blown away by Casey's performances in the band because, as you know, there's people coming on board, younger people discovering Queensryche all the time and uh, there's been more than one person who has called in and talked about Casey's playing and how he has really uh, just completely become a fixture in that band so you got to be happy with what uh, with the way he's gone over with the fans I would think yeah I mean it, it's great we have a really solid lineup now and we've been touring on it for a while and we're really happy with with uh, you know the outcome and it's like we're we're a band of musicians that, that can tour and, you know, and bring it every night, but we're also a band that can be in the studio together and write an album. So um, it's a really good scenario right now for uh, Queens, right? And the other spot in the band on, on guitar opposite you is Mike Stone back in there for a while. Parker Lundgren was there. You know, I, I ran into Parker at a, Dallas guitar show a couple years ago and he told me he got super into like I guess selling and collecting guitars and bought a bought into a guitar shop or something like that and then shortly afterwards I heard that he was you know leaving the band I guess to focus on that a little bit what's it been like having uh having Mike Stone in there as your other guitar player um well you know this this goes to like what we were talking about before you know people change they want to go down different career paths and and you know parker's love of uh buying and selling uh, instruments and that's what he wanted to do so you know and mike came back uh to us he had been with the band for a while in the past and it just it just seemed natural and he just fit right in you know he was available and it was it was great you know we uh we, we used them on uh, uh, the Digital Noise Alliance. We wrote double solos together. We wrote, you know, he wrote solos. He played on different songs. Um, you know, so he's, he's, uh, he's a great writing guitar player as, as well as a touring guitar player. So, you know, we're really happy with this lineup. Everybody can go to queensrikeofficial.com. You can see all the tour dates. As uh, Michael mentioned earlier, they have missed a few shows because Todd had some vocal issues, but he's good to go for tonight. So the tour resumes in Tempe at the Marquee Theater. And as I'm scrolling through, it looks like you've got uh, a good amount of shows here that uh, run at this point. Uh, I guess, uh, I guess. well, you got a couple things already uh, in November. Actually, you're going to be with me at uh, an event called The Sands in Cancun. It's a ways down the line in November, but that's a great event that I host or co-host every year. So that's a lot of fun. You've got a couple festivals, and of course, you've got the Monsters of Rock Cruise coming up sooner than that, which, uh, of course, I'll see you on as well. Those are always fun. I imagine you have a good time on there as well. Yeah, it's always great. Um, you know, I reside in Florida now, so that's where those things, you know, take off. So it's it's a lot of fun. You know, it's, uh, it's a nice, I don't know, I don't know if it's a vacation, but it's, it's a it's a change from the the rigorous uh, uh, touring on the road, but um, I might add that you know after this tour is done, we're we're already building a, uh, a secondary tour that's going to happen in uh, the fall, probably October, and uh, so yeah, we're we're going to 
promote this album at least for a couple of years. Well, it's a killer record. I mean, I've talked to a lot of Queensryche fans that feel this is maybe the best one you've made since Todd has been in the band. Now that you've lived with it and played some of it for a bit, you know, how do you feel about it? Well, I think it's special just because, you know, this album was catapulted out of the pandemic, you know, uh, a time of, uh, you know, scary existence for the entertainment industry. So, um, and I think, you know, when we, we got together, when it was safe to get together, uh, we decided, hey, let's, let's do something different on this album. Let's, let's write this as a band in a room with no demos, no old songs or anything. Let's just go from the ground up and improvise and come up with ideas and everybody, you know, just get in on the songs and bring their creative flow. And this one was kind of, uh, a throwback to the early eighties, you know, when we'd all get together in a room and Garmo and I would throw riffs at each other and, and build songs. Right. And in those days, you know, there was no cell phones, there was no internet. And, you know, we were teenagers. We didn't, we didn't have, you know, money to buy a, uh, an Apple computer cause they were too expensive. Right. So you just learn the songs and you built them that way. So, Digital Noise Alliance, this is the same kind of principle, but, you know, obviously we have computers and a producer to archive ideas, um, which is fortunate for me because I, as I get older, an idea may pop in my head and then it's gone, right? I can't remember what I did. But um, so, you know, now it's like it's, it's totally, uh, you know, to me a valued uh, record just because it was, it was the band in the room creating from a guitar riff, a bass riff, a vocal line, a drum beat, you know, it's just a, a real special record for the band. Is there a Queensryche record for you that is your personal favorite, not counting the new record? Do you have a, re like from the, the old days or whatever, is there a record that, uh, that is your favorite, the standout record for you? Uh, not really. I mean, I like them all for different reasons. It's, um, you know, obviously the, the first six records are, are very special, you know, because that was the beginnings of the band and that's when we were finding, you know, our identities and, um, you know, but I just, I'm just proud of everything that we've done. I wouldn't change anything. I think it's, it's just, uh, we're just very fortunate, you know, to be able to, uh, keep doing what we're doing and you know looking back at this being 40 years since the band started i mean do you have anything is that even really hit you are you the type of band that would commemorate that do you whether it be through reissues or doing some sort of retrospective tour or potentially even trying to reunite with some ex-members for a special show does any of that appeal to you or no um, you know, all those ideas are, are, you know, thrown into a hat and it's like, you know, I, I don't know. It's just everything takes so much effort and so much time to, to build, you know. So, uh, you know, right now, I mean, there's there's talks of us maybe doing a live album. I don't know. Um, so we'll, we'll just keep doing what we're doing. And if, it, if things make sense at a certain time then we'll, we'll look at it. But, you know, I can't, I can't foretell the future. You know, one last thing on that. Jeff was on my show uh, maybe a year or so ago, and he did say that there was a promoter somewhere that made a large offer for one show with the original five guys, and that one member of the band uh, said no, and that pretty much did it in. Uh, w what can you say about that? Yeah, I... I don't know. I didn't hear about it. I never saw any offers. I, I know our management never saw any offers. Um, so I have no idea about that. Well, listen, man, 40 years is a hell of a milestone and uh, congratulations on it. And it's amazing. You're still making high quality records. Now, a lot of bands with your catalog, uh, they would not even bother making new music as frequently as you do. And I think, uh, 
I think this new album, Digital Noise Alliance, is is I've talked to a lot of Queensryche fans myself. You know, I've, myself included, feel this way. It's a really, really killer record, and uh, congratulations on it. I'm glad you're going to stick with it and and keep uh, pushing it out, pushing it out there, and touring it. Yeah, well, thank you. You know, we appreciate the support. You know, and and we uh, appreciate you know the fans supporting us. You know, and the the whole touring aspect. It was. Um, you know, we'd like things to get back to the way it was, you know, back in 2018 and 19, but it's, you know, this industry, it's just ever changing and it's always going to take longer than you think to get back to the, the normal. So I don't know, maybe this is the new normal, but we're, we're adapting. We're chameleons. We, we will figure it out and we will keep doing what we're doing. Queensryche official.com is the website the band is currently on tour here in the u.s as uh, i mentioned they are in tempe tonight and the dates just keep going from there and uh i will see you if not before i'll certainly see you on board the ship michael oh real quick i wanted to ask you this too you had another band on the side of queens uh soul bender are you still doing that um you know i'm i'm known for having all these side projects that never get finished right so uh, but yeah, nothing, uh, I I'm so consumed with Queens, right? You know, I'd, I'd love to do something on the side, but I just don't have any time right now. And, uh, but you never know, uh, another project may surface here in the future if, if I get it done. Um, but yeah, I mean, the soul bender guys are really cool. Um, uh, we lost our bass player. That was really sad. He passed away. Um, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, some of the guys are just, uh, you know, I don't know what they're doing. They've gone different paths in their lives. So, but, you know, never, never say never. Well, I still wear the T-shirt you gave me all the time. People always ask me what it is, that skull on the front of it. I was like, it's one of Michael Wilton's bands. They have no idea, but it's a cool <laughs> shirt. So, yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. It's a cool logo, cool shirt. And, uh, yeah, so. Again, you know, I'd like to keep churning out side projects, but I'm just I'm just consumed by this machine called Queen's Rank. Well, you know, as you should be. It's your baby, and, uh, you, you know, you're one of two that have been there since the thing was born. So it's up to you and Eddie to keep that, you know, steer that ship and keep it going. And as long as you're pumping out music, uh, music as good as Digital Noise Alliance, keep at it, man. Good stuff. Right on. Thanks so much, Eddie. Hey, Michael, say hi to the guys, travel safe, and again, if I don't uh, see you before, I'll see you next month on the ship. Sounds like a plan. Let's, uh, All right, man. Yeah, let's definitely uh, you know chat when we get to the uh, Monsters of Rock cruise or something. Okay, buddy? Sounds good, man. Safe travels out there. I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks for Take supporting care. us and supporting live music. You got it, bro. Take care. Have a good show All tonight. Right. Kick ass, Eddie. Bye. Bye. There he goes, everybody. Michael Wilton, uh, nicknamed Whip, joining us live for a bit, uh, getting us caught up on Queensryche activity. And what we were able to confirm there is that they're back playing tonight. Uh, they've canceled three shows in a row, so fans were concerned as to when they were going to resume, if they were going to resume, and we can confirm now. It's 1.09 p.m. in the Pacific time zone. Although, again, Arizona doesn't... They're in Arizona. Arizona is the one... I think Arizona is the one state that doesn't do daylight savings. So Arizona might only be two hours behind the East Coast. So I don't know. I think that's why he got screwed up on the time today. Because I think Arizona is the one place that doesn't change. I don't know why any of us change. It's, it's so annoying. It's ridiculous, but... Anyway, uh, we can confirm that Queensryche are resuming and that Todd is back and will be able to perform tonight with the band. And again, go to the website wherever you are. They're everywhere. I mean, they're playing nonstop and they're playing all over the place and all the dates are on the website. And as you heard Michael say, there's going to be a whole nother run announced for the fall. So plenty of places, opportunities, and ways to see Queensryche going forward. And you know, it's a weird thing because... When you talk about ex-members of Queensryche, which come up so often, because, again, it's a band that, uh, I mean, 
two, three really identifiable members are no longer there. The, the front man, Jeff Tate, DeGarmo, who people, who's been gone forever, but people still ask about, who was a main songwriter on all the classic stuff. And then when those guys were gone, the guy who really assumed the front person mantle in that band was the drummer, Scott Rockenfield. And then stuff went south with him. So it's a really interesting thing that although they are still a very good band and make really good new records, I'm sincere about this new record. It's just uh, interesting how this is all unraveled. And you know what Jeff is doing? He's out there doing mostly Queensryche songs with his own band. We know DeGarmo has largely been out of the music industry for a long time. And the DeGar- and the uh, Scott Rockenfield thing is a huge mystery. And as you could tell, and he didn't want to talk about it, obviously, but and who knows what that is? I mean, I imagine it's probably over money and control of the name and what have you. And obviously it's stuff he couldn't talk about now because there's legal shit going on. But I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Like, uh, Rock and Field got in touch with me about three years ago and saying all privately on the phone, we talked for the longest time. He's like, I'm going to come out. I'm going to tell this. I'm going to talk about this, whatever. And, you know, it, Never heard from him again. But I guess behind the scenes, there's some wrangling going on. So who knows how that plays out? Never, ever, ever shortages of drama behind the scenes with all these bands, especially when it comes to past members and trying to figure out who gets what and who's entitled to what, which speculating, but I have a feeling is probably some of what's going on. 